a superstar. You know him when you see one. LeBron James is one of the most powerful athletes in the history of the world, and when he was still in high school, scouts were already predicting him to be the first pick of the NBA draft. Why wouldn't they? LeBron was 6 foot 7 and weighed 245 pounds as a senior. Now he checks in at 6 foot 9 and 250. Even if you've never heard of the sport of basketball, just seeing LeBron warm up would be enough to convince you he's a superstar. One look at Josh Hamilton and you knew, this guy's gonna be great. Coming out of high school, Hamilton was 6 foot 4 and weighed 205 pounds. He was the biggest, fastest player on most fields, who could hit the ball a mile and could throw with the cannon from the outfield, and over 95 on the mound. Almost no 18 year olds play in the bigs anymore, shout out Robin Yunt. But Hamilton was a talent that perhaps could have. Even a novice fan could see the electricity combined with those size 19 shoes. He has since become a shining example of a superstar talent gone sour, but still, no one could have predicted that at the time. But sometimes, superstars don't fit the mold. Sometimes, they aren't the godlike physical pinnacle of the sport they play. When scouts first see them, doubts creep in. Just being undersized already puts some players behind the eight ball, because they simply don't look the part. Baseball is a superstar who has faced these struggles for his entire life. Chicago Cubs pitcher Marcus Stroman, who's been listed in height at 5'7 for most of his career, though sometimes up to 5'9 depending on his team that season. The bottom line, Marcus Stroman is undersized for just about every major sport except horse racing, and yet today, he ranks amongst the very best hurlers in the majors. And remember, today's major league teams are data driven, with short pitchers in low demand because of the biomechanical challenges they inevitably face. Scouts aren't turning over stones looking for the next 5'7 superstar starter, they're looking for the next Tyler Glass now at 6'8, or Andrew Painter at 6'7, tall guys who throw downhill and whose release point is feet closer to home plate. Even guys like Shane McClanahan at 6'1 are pushing the boundaries of being considered short for a hurler. That Marcus Stroman became a superstar baseball player is remarkable, but a superstar pitcher at that? Nearly impossible. Maybe that's why he named his clothing line HDMH. Height doesn't measure heart. But before we get more into that, I want to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy, and how you can get involved with your favorite team and players every single day. With Underdog's Pick'em, you can choose between the over or under on a multitude of available daily stats, ranging from strikeouts, hits, pitch count, to their fantasy points. Then, you simply select 2-5 to five picks, and if your picks are correct, you can win anywhere from 3 to 20 times your initial entry amount. Or, if those stakes are a bit too high for you, you can always go with their insured system, which allows you to get one pick incorrect in exchange for a lower multiplier. Overall, I think it's a great way to have some fun and maybe make a little money while you're doing it. Getting started is simple. Go to underdogfantasy.com, sign up with promo code MTC, and Underdog will double your initial deposit up to $100. The link to do so will be in both the description and pinned comment below. Again, that's promo code MTC at underdog.com for double your initial deposit up to $100. Now, back to our video. Try to imagine this scene, a high school baseball game in Medford, New York, on Long Island. Perennial powerhouse Patchogue Medford takes the field in another competitive class AA contest. Tryouts have been fierce, with many good players cut. Even better players won't get much playing time and will ride the pine all season. And then, into the game comes a defensive specialist who looks to be about the same size as the fungo bat. The parents in the stands don't know him, because he doesn't go to the school. In fact, he's an 8th grade. An 8th grader on varsity? An 8th grader on varsity who is very, very small at that? What in the world was this coach thinking? How can this kid play over my fully grown son? That's exactly what happened to Marcus Stroman. The coach, Anthony Fransonia, took the heat. If you watched him for 10 seconds, he explained, you knew he belonged. Stroman could make all the plays the seniors couldn't, despite his size, but Fransonia wasn't surprised at all because he'd watched Stroman grow up on a football field. Earl Stroman wanted his son to be a football star. As a Suffolk County detective, Earl was no stranger to life's struggles. He knew that to make it, you needed to work hard. Even as a child of six, Marcus was taught that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And so to the field they went, father and son. Even then, Marcus was smaller than the other boys his age. It didn't matter. Earl had Marcus push weighted sleds and running hills. Earl had played at Patchogue Medford himself, and one day, Marcus would follow in his footsteps. If not in football, then in basketball. Baseball at the time was a distant third. Fransonia watched as a little kid threw a football all over the field. It seemed impossible that a kid that small could throw a football that hard. He had an arm, and Fransonia took note. The son, however, was a baller. He was a point guard, and he loved to hoop. He played baseball in the summer, but basketball was the sport Marcus dreamed of playing. Except, unfortunately for him at the time, the world didn't beat a path to the door of 5'7 point guards. He starred for one season as a JV quarterback, but gave up the gridiron to save his body for baseball and basketball. Basketball. He was an outstanding point guard in high school, averaging 27 points per game as a senior, but it was on the baseball field where he shined the brightest. 
Because of his defense and speed, he played shortstop and batted leadoff. Oh, and he pitched. He pitched despite the fact he was told he was too short to be a starting pitcher. Everyone who saw him for the first time after all assumed he was a slap singles hitter. MLB scouts weren't sure either. About 50 of them came to a legendary game in April 2009, when Stroman took the bump in a playoff game against his rival high school. The opposing pitcher was future Met Steven Matz. The two went head to head, each featuring 90 mile per hour plus fastballs. Stroman struck out 14 and Matz 12, but Stroman gave up the only run of the game and his team lost. In the draft that year, Matz went in the first round. Stroman went in the 18th round, 532nd overall. Matz was a 6'3 lefty who looked the part. Stroman was seen as a pitcher who could maybe relieve one day, unless he stayed at short. A starter? No way. Stroman's parents expected that whatever Marcus did, he had to give 100% effort and that included his schoolwork. An excellent student, Stroman didn't sign in 2009 and instead headed off to Duke University, which isn't exactly known as a baseball hotbed. The last Duke product to make it to the show before Stroman was Nate Fryman, who got 277 ABs in two seasons with the A's in 2013 and 2014. Interestingly enough, Fryman was one of the tallest players in the majors when he played. Stroman went to Duke because he wanted the elite education and the challenge of the ACC. At Duke, Stroman began as a two-way player, though as a freshman, he did pitch a complete game against Wake Forest. Mostly he pitched in relief, with some spot starts. He was the first Blue Devil to make the USA Baseball's National Collegiate Team, but he didn't start. Again, he was a reliever, this time the closer. As we said before, this pretty much reflected the thinking of most MLB scouts, who were concerned that Stroman had a max effort delivery more suitable for the bullpen. One scout even directly used Stroman's 5'7 frame as an excuse to bump him from the first round. This was despite the impressive number Stroman put up at Duke during his draft year, striking out 12.5 per 9 innings with a 2.39 ERA. Stroman had heard this since he started playing baseball. He was too short to be a starter. After all, no MLB pitcher under 5'8 had pitched 200 innings since the early 70s, but one team promised to make him a starter, the Toronto Blue Jays, who took him with the 22nd pick of the first round. Stroman began his minor league career not ranked as one of the top 100 MLB prospects, but this kind of slight only fueled his fire. His high school coach had said that Stroman always had a chip on his shoulder and used anything negative to motivate him. His minor league career got off to a promising start, first with Vancouver before moving to AA New Hampshire, a jump from low A that many players don't make in a single season. Again, Stroman didn't start and appeared in only 8 games, but he was set to break out in 2013. The next season, he became a starter and finished with a 9-5 record with an ERA of 3.30. He struck out almost 11 batters per 9 innings. But there was a blemish. The end of his season was abrupt. He was suspended for 50 games for violating the league's banned substance policy. Stroman claimed it was for an over-the-counter medication. The upside, Stroman went to the Arizona Fall League and held hitters to a 188 batting average. He impressed enough scouts that he finally cracked the top 100 prospects list, coming in at 55. Still, when the 2014 season started, Stroman was slated to work and extended spring training, with no real chance at a big league call-up. But he didn't mope or feel sorry for himself. He used that time to work on a cutter and his changeup, two pitches he'd need to keep hitters off of his fastball. Typical Stro, never admit defeat and keep grinding. It worked, because after a few AAA starts, he was called up to Toronto on May 3rd, where he worked in relief. Then he was sent back down, only to be recalled on May 30th for his first big league start, a win over the Royals where he worked six innings, striking out six and walking none. He was finally in the bigs to stay. He started 19 more times that season, including a 93-pitch shutout against the Cubs where he retired 19 straight. But he would end his year suspended for throwing at Caleb Joseph in September, finishing his rookie campaign with an 11-6 record and an ERA plus of 104. Not too shabby for a guy who who was seen as having basically no chance of making the majors at one point. He was poised to open the 2015 season on the hill against his hometown Yankees in Yankee Stadium, a kind of dream come true, except it all came crashing down during spring training, when Stroman tore his ACL during a routine bunt fielding drill. The recovery time for a torn ACL can run between 9 months to a year on average. In cold medical terms, that meant Stroh's 2015 season was over before it had even started. Except Stroh wasn't willing to accept that cold medical fact. He vowed to come back and pitch during that 2015 season, which would entail going from scalpel to a major league mound in about six months. Maybe if his goal was to play pickup basketball during that time, this would have been seen as feasible. But a return to the elite competition of the big leagues? Just the throwing portion would take about a month. It didn't seem possible. An ACL recovery is a year. Everybody knows that. Well, 
except for Marcus Stroman. And that's not all. In addition to recovering from a torn ACL in record time, Stroh decided he'd also knock out the 15 credit hours he needed to earn a degree in sociology from Duke. Most normal college students might take 6 or 9 credits over a summer. 12 would be pushing it, but 15? And not just any credits, Duke University credits, where Nobel laureates are doing the grading, or just really smart grad students. Oh, and at this point, Stroh hadn't taken a college class in 3 years. What was he thinking? This is how a 5'7 pitcher becomes an unlikely superstar. The intangibles, the makeup, the drive. None of these a scout can measure. It's easy to figure out how tall someone is, but how can you truly get a sense of how tough they are? A person's height doesn't correlate to the size of a person's heart after all. It goes without saying that Strowman worked essentially 24 hours every day to complete both his rigorous rehab, that must have been equal parts torture and torment, and his schoolwork, where the last essay he wrote was a 15-pager on slavery in the 16th century. No basket weaving for Stro. And somehow, after a rehab start in Lansing and one in Buffalo, by September 2015, Marcus Strowman was starting again for the Jays in Yankee Stadium. He got the dub, going three innings and surrendering three runs. Not a stellar line, but the fact he did it at all was mind-blowing. He then went on to win his three other starts, finishing the regular season 4-0, helping the Jays to advance to the postseason, where they eventually lost to the Royals in the ALCS. It's not clear that anyone else in the history of the sport accomplished what Stroman did in 2015, recover from major surgery in six months while finishing a college degree. More needs to be made of this truly insane feat of mental and physical strength. There was no way any mortal could top what Stroh did in 2015, and predictably, in 2016, he fell back to earth, with a pedestrian 9-10 season and an ERA plus of 97, putting him slightly below league average as an MLB pitcher. He left too many pitches in the zone with a 47.2 hard hit percentage, though he still was among league leaders by getting grounders on 60.2% of balls in play. He helped get the Jays back to the postseason, where the then Indians eliminated them in the ALCS. Stroh lost the only game he started in that series, and got shelled. A setback for sure, but Strowman never stayed down for long, and he came roaring back in 2017 with the season for the ages. It all started in the WBC in March, where Stroh again helped lead a team to the pinnacle, this time helping the US finish off its first world championship, and was named MVP of the tournament in the process. In the final, he kept Puerto Rico hitless through six innings as Team USA cruised to an 8-0 victory. He kept on rolling into the regular season, finishing with a record of 13-9 and an ERA of 3.09. Fewer of his pitches were hit hard, as his percentage dropped down 5%, and he led the majors with a 60.2% ground ball percentage. Crucially, his ERA Plus skyrocketed to 145, putting him where he truly belonged, well above average, bordering on elite. At the plate, Stroh was the first AL pitcher since 1971 to have a pinch hit extra base knock and the first pitcher 5'8 or shorter to hit a home run. Oh yeah, and he also won a gold glove. Not a bad year for someone too short to be a starter. But events took a turn for the worse in 2018, as Stroman got off to a terrible start. 0-5 with an ERA that ballooned above 7. He had to go on the IL in May for shoulder fatigue, and when he came back through rotation, he battled a reoccurring issue with blisters on his pitching hand. All in all, it was a major setback, with his ERA plus falling to 77, a career low. He was still getting a lot of ground balls, but his ERA stayed above 5. Had Stroman's Comet finally come crashing down to earth? Nope, doubters be damned, he came back even stronger in 2019. His ERA was 2.96, though his 6-11 record was indicative of the fact he was pitching on a team that was in need of a rebuild, or at least a retooling. Despite making the All-Star team, Stroman was trade bait, and in July, he got sent to the Mets for a pair of prospects. In other words, he was going home. He went 4-2 with an ERA of 377 with New York, trying to help the Mets catch the Braves and the Nationals. They finished 10 games over 500, but didn't end up making the postseason. Then came COVID in 2020, with Stroman electing not to play that season. He signed an $18.9 million extension to stay with the Mets in 2021, and put together a solid season on a sub-500 team. He went 10-13 with an ERA of 3.02. He induced fewer ground balls with a 49.5% rate, but his batting average on balls in play still stayed well below league average. He was a durable starter and he wanted to get paid. Five years and 100 million was his stated target. The Cubs signed him for three years and 71 million, with an opt-out to become a free agent after the second season. This is crucial because it dovetailed nicely with the theme of Stroman's life, overcoming challenges one after another on his own terms. He would get to have a large portion of the control over his own fate, not leaving it up solely to the team he signed with. Though Stroman had a very solid 2022 season in the Windy City, the Cubs were a bad team. Stroman, for his part, had a solid ERA of 3.5. Overall, it was a nice season, but perhaps not quite what he expected of himself. Over the offseason of 2023, he regularly posted videos of himself working out on social media, giving evidence just how hard he was training. Even still, there was nothing in Stroh's 2022 numbers that indicated what would happen in 2023. But clearly, Stroman had come into this season with something to prove. 
just as he had countless times before, and boy oh boy has he showed out so far. Currently, he's leading the league in a laundry list of categories, including Game Started, ERA, Whip, Hits Per 9 Innings, and perhaps most importantly, ERA Plus. He's back to getting hitters to chop his sinker into the ground, with his home runs allowed being about half the league average. Opposing hitters are hitting just 191 against him. Essentially, he's reduced the entire league to Mario Mendoza. He's in line to contend for his first career Cy Young at the age of 33. Stroman is now looking for a contract extension with the Cubs, but the team won't publicly say what their plans are for Stro. Marcus tweeted that he's heard nothing from the club, but that he wants to stay. The team is currently under 500 again, but not out of the NL Central race due to the weakness of that division. If they end up selling, Stroman could be an inviting target at the trade deadline for one of the AL East teams that are in an arms race in baseball's best division. And at some point, the Stro show will get paid the big bucks, like even bigger than before. It's the perfect tribute to his career, that he's in high demand as a starter, considering how much doubt and bias he had to overcome to get to the top because of his stature. Stroman has spent his entire life turning conventional baseball wisdom on its head. He's turned his own battles into lessons for others to use by authoring YA books and creating the HDMH Foundation to spread his message of resilience and grit to kids. They told him he was too small, yet today he is one of baseball's most unlikely superstars. Thanks for watching everyone, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and click this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great day.